Hello, I'm Fenland Fisherman and welcome to another fishing video. come back down to the harbour, it's about 7 o'clock this morning, um, just come down my own today, both of my rods with me, once I get a rod, light rod for a bit of fun with a few flags and things hopefully, so, just see if we can get a few fish, can we walk up now to the swim? setting up the tripod currently. Now I know a lot of people have been interested in this, like when I've been fishing down here they can have a little look at it. This most people just use the tinny or the aluminium aluminium sorry not um, aluminium tripod. But I've been using this and all it comprises of quite simply a guard the triad which obviously as you can see from the hook below can be used for you know weighing you know so you have a tripod and weight fish underneath it if you've got a really big fish you can't really lift it perfect for that, it's such a strong block, it's good for that. Um, and obviously you've got three attachments so I'm just screwing in the bank sticks at the moment, which I'm just using the normal extending bank sticks from Gardner. I'm um, just screwing those in at the moment. And um, yeah, so you've got those three points. So you've got an extra point here, so you can have almost like a sort of scud when you're um, fishing on rivers, or even on the beach I'd have a, I'd have probably two um, proper long bank sticks or something you'd use, you know, in your brolly system or whatever, um, you know, storm poles another storm pod coming off here so it's like a proper scud get your rods right up high but here when I'm quite a way off the water anyway I don't want them very high up so I want a nice stable area um, just to have my rods on so we're just screwing in the rod rests on top and of course because all the water is added in and it's not one solid item you can vary it and, and, and have different um, different bits of tackle over it but yeah that's the tripod I'm using and obviously I can extend it by extending this bank sticks but at the moment this is about right and it's a nice solid area that you're going to move and then what I'm going to do which I haven't got with me today but I usually have a little bag of stones or lead just hang them on this on this hook there's no advantage to having a hook obviously and um, just get a bit more weight because because it's lightweight you know you can barely feel this pick up one finger no problem which is good for me when I'm walking down from my house which is way up there um, you want some stones to stop it skidding about in the concrete. But if I'm on sand, mud, wherever, you know, if I'm fishing freshwater even on the beach, you won't need that because, you know, it'll just stick into the into the sediment. But that's what I'm doing um, in terms of my tripod. I've got some, some people might be interested. I know people who see me fish here are. But, you know, what a lovely morning to be out. I see the boat's going out behind me now. It's just stunning. It's like a mill, like a mill pool. It's just lovely. You know, no one's down yet, so I'm going to get the rods out. And um, hopefully get a few fish. Coming out the second rod, which is a light rod. We've got a small three ounce dead on here. Hold on, using about an eight, eight ounce or a six ounce, I think. Left hand one's gone out into a, um, a heavy one. Gone out into a gully where the boat's coming out of the harbour. 
in the car and look a bit deeper and a lot further out. It's just going into this little cove break by the harbour. So it's because I'm using a really heavy lead for the one ounce curved rod. You can sort of not properly cast, just more of a little sort of rock. There we go, it's not far out at all. It's good to me just like a springy rod with a light test curve. That little lob gets out exactly as far as I need it. So this one's out for anything, so I'm going to get up for a better fish, but if anything goes off of anything I'll be happy. It's not so much about the fish catching for me, more than that, it's just about being out. One of the most important things about fishing in winter, sort of a nice warm drink with it. I suppose one of the advantages is living up the road. Um, you can just have a cup of tea and it's a nice um, um, flask where Stanley threw it up there, but you get the idea. Um, and sorry, both rods are going nuts. Just <laughs> don't look at them. <laughs> both are biting. I'm not sure which one to hit. The right hand one today, just give me a sec. I don't think I'm in, but it was going round. The problem is it's such a light rod. Um, it's easy to get them ones going now. <laughs> right, well, sorry about that. It was a little bit nuts. The right hand rod was going because it's like a rod. It really goes when there's a fish on it or fish bite. It's really easy to think that you've got a fish definitely on when in actual fact there might not be anything there at all. It's just biting at the bait. So anyway, yeah, that, that was going. The left hand rod started going as well, shaking about. Oh, and the right hand rod just had a hell of a whack then. Another proper whack. Like that. Isn't it funny, just I'm talking to the camera, and I'm still having a little bite. Typical. As soon as you start talking. Anyway, I was just going to say, when you come out sea fishing, always make sure to have a nice cup of warm drink. I've got a nice cup of tea I made half an hour ago before I started walking down here. Lovely in it, and what a beautiful morning to sit here. And then again, don't need to be kept that warm, it's about 8 degrees. God, boiling, it's like summer weather. <laughs> now nah, I'm loving it. Hopefully, we can get a fish out just to top it off. I've already seen Razorbill and Shag from about around the um, area. Razorbill isn't ridiculously common, so I'm really happy to see that, especially for this time of year. So, yeah, things like wild, you know, just seeing wildlife and things really can make my day. And you like that right hand rod is properly going now. So I'll see if I can hit it. <laughs> right, I'll see in a bit and hopefully with a fish. Well I'm into a fish on the light rod I lost. I'm just going to bring it up now, I don't think it's terribly big. I'm not even sure what it is yet. Just a bit of mackerel on, on those sort of sits and sizes. Oh, it's a little flappy, what a way to stop the I do love catching these. A little dab, I think, looking at it. Give me a minute. But it's like, I haven't hit the floor. Just show them to you. There he is. Hold him still. Love a little flatty. Nice way to start the day. So well, what a manic five minutes that was. <laughs> Not only have I been getting non-stop bites on the rods, but um, hearing about the corpses, I thought, right, I've got to try and see him, or at least get some on film. Not too sure how well the film came out, so whether or not you see any or not is a different story, but um, all right. I've ruined the rods quickly, five minutes, run around just on the top of the um, wall behind me so I can get a better look out. Saw two, very, very happy with that, you know, to fish, <laughs> catch fish, see something like a razor bill, a great northern diver, and to see porpoises. Um, oh, <laughs> for me, that you couldn't get any better, you know, session for me. Just brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I thought I'd share that with you. I've just put the rods back out again now, already getting bites on um if excuse the noise for that, my other camera. For some reason having automatic turn off. That's exactly what you want in the camera, isn't it? For it to turn off every five minutes automatically. Fantastic can thank you for that. Anyway, that's my rant over. But yeah, literally already getting bites on my heavy rod. Just um cast that out. About sixty yards again. Dun, 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 you think, oh, that's a fish, you hit it, nothing there. So, <laughs> we'll leave it for a bit until the rod um, gets dragged in, I think. Then we'll see if there's a fish on the end. But I think, really, the reason why I'm not getting any fish on the heavy rod today, I'm using much larger hooks. I'm using size 8 um, incisor hooks on the right hand rod. You know, it's light as I've seen the bikes, all that really helps. All scaled down, really. So, I'm catching fish on it, but the other run, I've got some. 
larger hooks in a size 1.0 in sizes and a size 8 mugger, not 8 sorry, a size 4 mugger on the bottom hook which is small for what I'd usually be using on that rod but still the fish just aren't getting it so I don't know very big out there today which I never expect in the daytime anyway when I'm fishing through the day as well I'll take that light rod with me now <coughs> excuse me because you just get more fun out of the fish that are out there there's no point trying out for a big cod if they you don't think they're there and just ruining your fishing by having a lot of heavy rod doing this seems to be a nice halfway house for me but anyway yeah we're going to keep at it and see if there's it see if there is anything out there I think I'm in this time. Quite difficult to know though. So it's heavy rod. It's so heavy, the lead's so heavy, it's hard to know you've got fish on the fish is really small. Now I've got one on, I get it. Bounce it about. tail or something. So definitely a doggy dog world or a cormorant eat fish world. <laughs> Seems to be in freshwater more and more now. Nice enough fish though. I'm gonna put it back straight back in the sea. I've actually haven't taken a fish home with me yet since I've been here. And really I, I will start if I catch a cod or a nice wise and something I will I will take it home but with my course fishing roots of putting everything back, every single fish you catch. To me I'd just rather see them swim back every single time. Bouncing about a bit more, so it could be a little bubbly or something. It's not very big. We have quite a good bite. <laughs> no, it's a little fat again. Looks like a face. There we go. A little place you can probably see the mackerel outside of its mouth. Lovely little fish. Then hook it and put it straight back. Come to the end of the session now, but I'm probably going to be back a little bit later. People started arriving down and now, so they're, they're everyone getting their way of um, equipment. 
but you know, really enjoyed it this morning. Had a few flappies and stuff. Got got on the light rod, which is really what I wanted to be doing this morning. And also seeing all those porpoises and things really made it. But anyway, um, like I said, I'll be back again probably in the evening after some coal in cod. Right, I'll see you next time in tight lines. Well, hello, and you join me and Matt, the Intrepid Duo, back down um, the harbour again, just out sea fishing. During the day, it's such a lovely day, I thought, you know, got a day off from uni, you'd be mad not to be out fishing, really. So we decided to come out on a sunny day, just to see if we can catch anything. We're not, we're not stupid. We know during the day, you don't tend to catch a lot of bigger fish. They tend to come out during the night. Um, but I, I've just brought my lighter rod with me, and normally a heavy one in case anything big turns up. Just have a bit of fun, you know. I know there's quite a few flatties and things that will quite happily take the bait during the day, but again, they're not big. So if I take my lighter rod, hopefully, even if we don't get a fight out of them still, I should be able to see the bite this time. So, like I said, one rod out, heavy stuff, eight ounce lead, ripple lead, out there, with a nice big chunk of mackerel. Hopefully, something bigger, like a nice white, and someone come and take it. Right hand rod, lighter rod, one pound test curve, about that anyway. Um, cut the very small bits, pieces of mackerel, shake the rigs and stuff on that one later, and on the heavier one. Um, and yeah, just for a bit of fun, see if we can catch anything, could have been fishing just into darkness, and hopefully, something bigger will turn up during the darkness, but during the day something small so you won't go and miss on that lighter rod. Well there we go, so um, well my second fish of the day, small place, this came on the heavy rod this time so obviously there wasn't really any bouncing on the tip but nice enough fish, let's put it back. Right let's have a quick run through the rig that I'm using on the lighter rod today. Um, pretty much made up of the same basic tackle which I use for my heavier fishing. So I'm still using the heavy 50 pound leader make up the main length of the rig what's that it's about two or three foot long and I've just got that run down to a quick lock swivel from Gardner which enables me to attach this three ounce lead you know that's not a gripper lead that's just a normal three ounce lead lightly juice for carp fishing and when I'm casting into the areas where I know the tide is going to have such an effect into the slacker areas just around the harbour wall and things that's all you need and quite often I'm quite happy to bounce it about in the tide Anyway, so that's taking care of that part of the rig. Like normal, I've got I've got a little metal boom running off the main line um, to about what's that, 15 pound hook link. Same same as I'm using for my main line. That's a 15 pound um, surf cast from Gardner. Again. Now for my hook, really, it's very very simple. I'm just using a size eight long shank in size a barbed obviously because I don't really want to lose the fish here. <laughs> There's no barbless rule in the sea. Well not as far as I know anyway. But a small strip of mackerel on there and that you know for the small flatties and coley and things which I'm after on this rig, that seems to be all you need. If I was after cod, I'll be using um, the size twos or whatever or the size one size which I have been using. But that seems to be working well enough at the moment. That's the rig I'm gonna carry on using. And you know, sim um, simplicity is key itself. So, let's carry on using that. Getting towards high tide now, got a nice little uh, decent sized place. Just going to throw him back. There you go, really happy with that. First prop fish of the session. Nice little coldy, and on the light rod too, so it even gave a fight. Perfect, let's put it there. So there we go, second fish now, well, second best fish or whatever. It's not even that big. But um, another little coldy, taking a mackerel, again on the light rod. Great stuff, um, hopefully we'll get another one. There we go, third colony now, a lot nicer fish. This one's well over a pound, maybe even two, I don't know, but it's a really, really nice fish. With a hell of a fight getting the light rod, but I want to put this one back just so I can see it swim back safely. All right, slip it back. 
Well, hello, and yet again you join me, well, back here in my bedroom. Um, simply because, as you probably know from watching the other two sea fishing videos, it seems to be quite hard to film the outro, especially at time of night. And really the main problem is not so much to do with um, the wind noise engines, which often is a major problem with the sea fishing. It's actually to do with the sheer amount of people down there and getting the good audio quality and the good video quality that I require. If there's about 20 or 30 people fishing around you, it's very difficult to film. So hopefully you'll appreciate why I have to end the videos like this so often. But yeah, as you'll know, this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Probably my best, um, my best few sea fishing sessions I've done in a long time. Well, since I've started fishing here, at least. Certainly enjoy catching the fish, and there's been some real nice ones and some truly brilliant sessions along the way. Anyway, it's the um, last day of term at the moment here at Scarborough. So this could hopefully be my last sea fishing video for a little bit. I do enjoy my sea fishing, but I'm itching to get out course fishing. You know what? I'm actually itching to go out night fishing. Night fishing was a big part of my fishing over the last few years, and I haven't been able to do it since being up here at Scarborough. You know, I've been out fishing at night, but not proper night fishing as far as I call it, out in the bivvy. I absolutely love it. it. Doesn't matter what the species is, just being out there at night in the in the silence on your own. I just think it's just magical. And looking at the weather, it's snowing right on cue. That lovely warm weather we had is gone now. Just just as I'm starting to get back home, it started to snow. So the weather hasn't disappointed. It's getting worse and worse. <laughs> the closer I get, the closer I get to getting home. So yeah, bang on cue. But either way, I'm looking forward to getting home and hopefully get a few night sessions and a few more course fishing sessions under my belt. But anyway, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time and tight line.